Tom Heenan and I'm coming to you from an old oak tree in Langdon Hills Country Park in Essex. Now I'm making this video as part of a course I'm taking, a biodiversity and global change course from the University of Zurich on the Coursera website. Now my assignment for week eight is to make a video talking about a biodiversity issue I care about and to say what I'm going to do about that issue. This is part of becoming a biodiversity ambassador, someone that speaks out on behalf of biodiversity. The issue I've chosen to talk about is ancient and veteran trees, hence my location and the tree that I'm standing next to. Now it's probably worth defining an ancient tree and a veteran tree. So an ancient tree is one that's reached an old age for its species and for its conditions, for example, um, the area it's living in. Is it living in good soil, in a good habitat, or is it living on the side of a mountain? Now, an ancient tree has acquired lots of interesting characteristics that makes it a veteran. A veteran tree has a number of um, aesthetic and uh, biodiversity and characteristics that make it really valuable. A veteran tree isn't always ancient, but it has acquired a number of old age characteristics through its life history. So this could be due to natural causes such as fire, a lightning strike, or being attacked by pathogens or animals. And this could also be due to the management by people. So a number of trees are coppiced or pollarded, and these techniques involve cutting the tree back and letting it regrow. And this can influence the form of the tree, its shape, the way it grows. And this can increase the chances of having really interesting um, little pockets of rot, for example, um, hollow trunks and things like that. They can also prolong the age of the tree. And the tree might be smaller than, than a normal tree of that age, um, but it can also um, live for a lot longer and acquire a really interesting shape. So, Ancient trees are all veterans, but not all veteran trees are ancient. So why ancient and veteran trees? It's something that I care a lot about. When I grew up, I was right on the doorstep of Epping Forest, which has a huge collection of veteran trees, um, one of the largest in the UK. And I thought they were really interesting and unusual. Although, to be honest, I didn't completely appreciate them until I moved away and I saw other woodlands and I realised how unusual they actually are. So trees that get to an ancient stage or acquire ancient characteristics are actually quite a small part of the population and they're fairly rare and over that age they accumulate a lot of biodiversity value um, due to their character and usually their size as well, they usually get quite big. Uh, they have a lot of aesthetic and cultural value as well. Some of these trees are named, some of these trees are part of history linked with famous historic figures. Accumulating a lot of dead wood over their age, over the period of their life, it means that they have a lot of value for insects, fungi, they have a lot of holes for animals to live in. Um, but this wasn't always appreciated. Um, for a long time, old trees and dead trees actually as well, um, weren't appreciated for their value and they were often tidied up and removed, allowed to die and so on. Over recent decades, the last 20 years, um, there's been a lot more awareness and gradually our understanding um, of the science behind the biodiversity has improved as well. Um, it's taken a while to work out how to manage some of these old trees. Um, the, the management of them can be quite challenging. Um, a lot of them have a number of stresses due to their age, both physiologically and biomechanically, and there's an interaction between that and also the organisms living on them, for example fungi, um, which can put a stress on them and might end their life. Um, some trees are also threatened by developments, um, for example, or even just heavy use around the base of the tree, for example, people or cars um, can affect their life. Um, unfortunately, if a tree that's old or has got um, old characteristics due to its life history. Uh, if it's allowed to die, or if it is removed on purpose, um, it 
hasn't always got successors, other trees nearby to replace it um, because they're fairly scarce and also because of the way we've managed the landscape and changed it. And this means a lot of the organisms that depend on these trees haven't got somewhere else to go and haven't got somewhere else to survive in the landscape and they could quite easily disappear. A lot of these uh, organisms are very specialist on old trees. So losing a tree um, such as this one could mean losing um, a few really interesting species, some of them that we don't even know about. So it's important that we manage the trees and to try and improve their chances to survive and also to think about the other trees around them and which trees might become ancient and veterans, so mature trees. Um, how can we encourage them to grow um, to old age and acquire these characteristics? Now if we take a look at this oak tree, it has a large girth. It's reached quite an age, an old age for the species. It's also got an interesting growth shape. So this tree was pollarded in its history, which has resulted in uh, multiple stems coming out um, from a certain height above the ground. There are some areas where it's dropped limbs or limbs have been removed. We've got some areas of dead wood and some holes and um, which might indicate some hollow stems and maybe even some hollow areas in the trunk. Now it's had some work, some of the branches have been cut to try and help stabilise the tree, make it more stable, more biomechanically stable, less likely to split and tear off. But it's also, over its age, started to retrench. The crown has slowly decreased, which has made the tree more stable. This is a natural process that occurs in ancient trees. So this tree here is both an ancient tree and a veteran tree as it's got old age and a lot of old age characteristics. Now standing on this side of the tree, we can see where a very large limb used to be. And now there's a lot of uh, dead wood and some space. Now all of these um, interesting little niches, these little uh, nooks and crannies, can all be habitat for different organisms. And there are certain insects, for example, that are specialist on this kind of habitat. So what can we do to help ancient and veteran trees like this old pollarded oak? 